I have some made that are um, for me to wear. Oh, personalized. Everybody loves them. At, at, at Champions, they're like, oh. So, um, all right. So, the first thing is, uh, and my phone's on, do not disturb. Um, and we're recording. Um, so, the first thing is, and of course, uh, anybody online can ask any questions. There's like a chat on the side, and I'll hit those every once in a while. Um, so, uh, because we, you know, we our, our firm concentrates on new agents. Uh, we're very attractive for part-timers and full-timers. I never... I'd like to put people in a box. Mm-hmm. So every Friday, if I don't hear questions from people or anything they, they want to have a question about, then um, then we'll um, we'll do what I want, I'm going to do. And that's just working with a buyer, seller, tenant, landlord, because I can get all those done in two hours. This is Callie Copeland. She is our uh, representative here at Truly Title. And um, I've known Callie personally for a long time. Hey, Oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Um, so we'll get going in a training in a second, but, uh, she, uh, she got, uh, got the virus a couple weeks ago. And so she's just now getting back to hundred yeah. percent. And, um, but uh, yeah, Thank you. I know I'm here. I'm on the side of things, so that's good news. But yeah. Uh, and we got any, over there. Um, any marketing needs or materials, notepads, pens, we have a really awesome app. We've got a great app that'll help with net sheets. We have a great app that helps with farming. So. Um, my card should be on that back table. If you have any questions at all or ever need help with anything, we're here to help. Obviously, close your deals, but also help on your end of things too. So yeah, and I had a cl- I had an agent I was helping. Uh, Alex, she just joined like a week ago, and she's got a contract out in Kemp, and the agent didn't care of the title company, so I put truly, and um, you know they'll work out something to go wherever they need to. So they'll go places if they need to. Um, there's multiple offices around the DFW, the Dallas and over in Fort Worth, and they're branched out of different states. Um, but anytime you have any copies you want to make, um, if I said it before, I'll, you know, I'll say it again, that they're like the Kinko's for us um, because they have a copy. They might tell you to go make the copies, but that's fine. Um, but they're here to support us. We give them business. We're a, team, a symbiotic relationship, and um, they're not going anywhere with us, and hopefully we're not – they'll continue to want to be with us because we're growing and so try to give them as much business as you can, but they're a great resource. If you ever have an issue with a title question legally, Josh is the head counsel for uh, the title company. They, he offices right here. Now, I'm not if you're going to go get it, which, you know, but I mean, if it's a real estate question, then he he's super and helpful. Also, too, I'll give you guys his cell phone number. And I've had a couple of you reach out before and he, yeah, he'll give you a cell phone number. So no, I'm not on the phone. She's maybe facing. He's a great resource. So. We're going to help you guys. Cool beans. Cool beans. Yeah. And then any bunk cakes take and uh, take one for everybody because we've got another one here. Take some for you. All right. So um, so, uh, so in case we don't have any questions, what I always thought I'd like to do is just talk about how I always get business. And um, I always have my ear pod in. Um, I had it in just a second ago. Um, I believe everything is going to be done on the phone. Um, and so, you know, everything I'm doing here on the, on the desktop, I have on my phone, this is, uh, MLS. So this is, uh, matrix.netris.net. You can see it up on the board. Um, matrix.netris.net. That's our MLS. And, um, when you log in, you're going to put your license number in, you're going to have a password. And I've always said that the, uh, the number one kind of tabs that we need to know about uh, after you get to this screen, you'll always hit this left corner one, matrix. Um, you're going to get to this screen, and um, sometimes you have to readapt. So let's see if we get into it. Yeah. So uh, if you hover over this screen, search screen, that's where you're going to do all your business. That's where you do searches for anything that we have access to. So the first one is residential. The second one is multifamily. The third one is lots and acreage, commercial, and residential leases. So first, I thought we cover a buyer, um, and that is probably who you're going to be working with first, a buyer or a tenant, because we have that Op City program. Um, the first leads you usually get are going to be from a buyer or a tenant. Okay, uh, the Op City is Realtor.com. It's a program we have with them where um, just two days ago, an agent that's brand new got a four hundred ninety thousand dollar lead off of Op City. Most of them are leases, but it's a numbers game. You know, um, and again, uh, Megan's got a lot of them. I looked through Op City. You've got a lot of people. And when you get three transactions, you go into a different bracket of leads. So they're free on the front end. Because they're free on the front end, Realtor.com charges, if it's over 150000 or any lease, it's 35% to Realtor.com. If it's under one fifty, it's 
And I think I'm basically going to have a concept where if it's under 150, I'm going to wave my 225 uh, so that y'all net the most because I don't want to take 225 from a $30,000 lot. That makes no sense because it's $900 commission. You're going to pay 30%. So that's $270. I don't want to take 225. So I'll waive that. Um, and uh, But we have no splits or caps with our company. So if you do this lead program, it's simply with realer.com. I do all the paperwork. I copy you on it when I send it to them. So you have a file. I have a file. Um, and I think that's pretty cool that I do all the paperwork because it is an effing beatdown. Um, but I want to make sure that I do it right so that we continue to get those and they don't shut us down because they will shut us down as a firm if somebody drops the ball. And you don't have to drop the ball because I do it. Um, what you need to do is whenever you get on realtor.com and you get a, it's op city, but whenever you get a lead, you won't ever close them out until I tell you, well, let me put it this way. When I've copied you on the paperwork going to realtor.com, that's when you close somebody out. When you go to closing and you're closing out a seller or a buyer with realtor, that's when you close them out. Don't close them out anytime before, even if you're, you know, because I might not get a check on a lease for six months. And so you closed them six months ago and now they're going to shut us down because they require payment 14 days from when you close them out. OK, so um, I'm going to keep saying that just so we're on the same page. But once I get the check, I'm obviously going to text you and, and then I'm going to copy you on an email. I send to realtor.com. So we'll all be in good shape. So the first thing is, let's just say that we're driving down the road. This is generally how it happens. Somebody calls you from a sign. Uh, yeah, push those down and open them. <clears throat> Somebody calls you from a sign or a, a, a friend um, or a lead. And they're like, hey, my name's Tabitha. I'm looking at 123 Easy Street. And I think that as soon as you pick the phone up, you set the appointment. So you go, absolutely. When do you want to look at it? Oh, I don't know. How about 6 p.m. tonight? Okay, cool. Well, I'll see you at 6 p.m. Hey, Tabitha, is this your cell phone? It is. And uh, get her email. Uh, ask her if she's, you know, what do you want to lease? Or you want the month? Um, you know, you want to have a conversation. A buyer that wants to get off the phone like that, that's not a buyer. And that's not the people I want to do business with. I want to have a relationship. So, um, you know, after I talk with her for a while, find out if she's pre-approved. I might put her on speaker and send her uh, Brooks Kelly, who's a lender. He's got 10 lenders that work for him. Um, uh, at the very end, I'm going to say, all right, I'll see you tonight at six. Hey, one more thing. Give me a realtor so I can sign them in in case you like the house tonight. I want to make sure I don't take a commission from your realtor. Oh, I don't have a realtor. Okay, I'll see you tonight at six. Okay. So obviously, I'm going to go and pull up the property. And the way to pull up any property is, let's say she called on 8005 Fall Meadow. I don't even know if it's available. i would already made the appointment. That's what I want to do. I don't want to pull over and wait 40 seconds for my phone to get into MLS. So I'm going to, hey, how we doing? Leno's in the house. Um, so um, what, what I would do is, this is so dumbed down, it's crazy. Uh, I just type in right here in the square. And the reason why I've made this square where it is is because all you do is go right here, type 008005, and just put an F for Fall Meadow, and you hit enter, and it from 2003 all the way to today, it's going to pull up any home that starts with 8,005 and an F. If you um, didn't know it was uh, 8,005, and you wanted to just type in Fall, it would pull up every home since 2003 with Fall in it. That's going to be a little more difficult to find. Um, so it's kind of dummy proof. Uh, you could actually go down and do uh, fall, and then you could go to city if you knew it was Plano, and you could find Plano. And uh, once you find Plano, it's gonna it's gonna make it uh, that much easier. I'm not the best with the alphabet, so probably the easier way to do it. So once you find Plano, now you're only searching any street since 2003 to today with F A L L and Plano. And the list should be a little smaller or get you there a little quicker. And you would just then have to look down for Fall Meadow. OK, um, so so let's go ahead and do it like it, we, we know how to spell it. And uh, so this is a property that she called on and I know how to spell. So I put that in. And when I pull it up, I see that it's not even available. So for some reason, it was on the Internet showing it was active. I'm going to go ahead and open it and I'm going to kind of get a feel for the property and go, oh, OK, it's in Plano 2002 about 400. Um, so I'm going to go in and hover over search, go residential, either quick or detailed. It doesn't matter. When you go to quick, 
<clears throat> you're gonna go over here and type in 0 500. Again, the three zeros are there. That means 0 500,000. If I put 500, that's gonna be 0 500 million dollar homes. Okay. Um, and then I go down to city and just type in Plano. And right now there's 96 homes. So I might go over to year built, knowing that that was 2002 and go 2000 and a plus sign brings me down to four. Okay. So I'm going to hit results. You do this every time. All you do is hit results, save new auto email every time. And you're going to get to a drop down that either I already have her name or I need to create her name. So if I cre create her name, I do Tabitha, her last name and her email. And I'm going to do it correctly, but for training, I'm just doing it quicker. You hit save and then she's going to be there. And in here, I would just put, you know, Plano Homes. And then when you scroll down, if you hit save, you email it. If you hit ASAP and then save, what that means is as soon as I hit save, I've emailed it to you. But in the next second, forever, if a home is listed that fits that criteria, you'll get it no matter what time of day, 3 a.m. If I leave it at the default, you'll only get it at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. I'd rather you get it um, every single time it's available. And the reason that I, I want that is because every time that property hits your email, it's got my picture, not the agent that listed it. OK, now, again, um, that's going to be for residential quick uh, residential detail. It's just a little more data. So uh, you can see that if you scroll down, there's some other things that you can click on. Um, one thing that I'm not a big fan of is going down here to acreage and doing like this. So don't don't mark that. Uh, instead, if you're going to do acreage, go to detailed and go like this one and a plus sign. And that pulls up everything one plus. OK, uh, or you could go one dash nine hundred, you know, one to nine hundred acres. And you can see there's twenty seven fifty in all of DFW. And then you could go and type in Gunter. And you can see there's four. OK, so it just gives you an idea. There's no price range on that. So now if I went up here to price range and went zero to uh, 600, there's one. So you can see how it eliminated from four to one. All right. And again, if I was going to send this, I'd hit results. I'd hit save. I'd hit new auto email. And of course, if I was sending it to her, she's in this drop down. So I would go down to t.t. .t, and you can see there she is. I click her. And then here I would just go uh, Gunter Homes. OK, it's pronounced Gunner, but uh, and then I would go ASAP before I hit save and boom, I just sent it to you. OK, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, again, all this is going to be repetition. So um, now let's say that somebody wanted to look at multifamily. Let's look and see what that looks like. Your choices down here are apartments slash five plexes, four plexes, full plex duplexes, multi-single units and triplexes. So if you wanted to search all multifamily, you wouldn't highlight anything. And you can see there's 193 and all the entire MLS without putting any criteria in. OK, so let's say that uh, Hammer wanted, uh, you know, hey, what's zero to 700 in the in the uh, in, in Dallas County? That's probably how I would do it. Thirty five. See what I'm saying? Um, and then if I wanted to send it to him, I'd hit results. I'd hit save. I'd hit new auto email. And again, I'm not going to go through it again, but you would put him in type something like multifamily, go to the bottom, hit ASAP, then hit save, and then you text him because you always want to be communicating. It could go to his spam if you don't do it and call him. Um, all right. So that's going to be uh, multifamily. Uh, multifamily. Like what, um, say you have like an investor that, oh, I, I want to buy a multifamily. As like a real estate agent, like what are you looking for? Like in a multifamily, like to be like, oh, I think this may be a good property. Or, is that something they have to decide themselves? Or like, what yeah. do you do in your capacity? As well, a for me, like even as long as I've been doing this, I, I've never actually done anything like an apartment, a, a full blown, you know, type of deal. So we have a lady in our office I just got named Nadia. She does some commercials. So she, I would give you her name if you said that and she would kind of walk you through it. Um, but, but again, I mean, it's going to, you know, Trek doesn't promulgate commercial. We have commercial in zip forms. Right. I, I can obviously get you to that forms right. and everything, but it would be more like failing forward. It's as, as, as weird as that sounds, but I wouldn't ever 
say I can't do it right. because the bottom line is the, a third grader could fill out a one to four family contract, just kind of reading it. Right. So we'll get through it together. I can always get resources. I wouldn't ever want you to say, no, I don't, I can't help you with that. So say yes to everything, right. get in touch with me and we'll find a way to get it done where we're, we're, we're competent, not right. half-assing it. Okay. Um, so, uh, but that's a good question. So that's, that's, uh, that's multifamily. A lot of times people will ask for lots and acreage. Okay. I mean, I, I see that all the time. So lots and acreage, again, under search, lots and acreage, you could go to detailed. Uh, when you go to detailed, make sure that only active is marked. Um, and then I always like to do farm and ranch and then also residential. Let's say that Eddie wanted zero to 400 and he wanted Greenville. Well, there's 35, but he also wanted five acre minimum. Well, notice right here, it doesn't give you where you can do a minimum and, or, a you know, I like that. So look, as you go down a little further, I have some underneath the results tab that was not there in the beginning. So underneath your results tab right now, you have a, a word that says either add or add remove. When you click on it, and this is in any search on the left, that's everything that's a definable criteria on the right is what you have so if you wanted to find pools you would just type in poo and it would pull up everything with poo in it well because it's a lot you don't have a pool in a lot you got to have a structure um so i typed in a long time ago acre and it got acres i moved it over added it and moved it to the right then when i hit back button it's going to be below my results tab so when I scroll down below my results tab, I'm going to have some extra criteria. OK, so that's going to be in any search. Um, and a lot of times when you go residential quick, you'll notice that um, you're kind of limited. This is the only search criteria right here. But if you scroll down and look underneath the results tab, you'll have add or add remove. If you click on it, that's where on the left you would go, oh, for house, let me put poo in. And there's there's pool. And now you move it over and now it's on the right. Now you go back and underneath the results tab, you're going to see pool. Okay. These are ones that I think are pretty cool because um, <clears throat> lot description. Sometimes somebody goes, yeah, I want to be by lake. Okay. Well, you can find lake. I want where horses are permitted. So if I just did that, horses are permitted and all the entire MLS, there's 584 properties where horses are permitted. Then I could go to county and go, oh, how about in Collin County? How many horses are permitted? 37. See what I'm saying? You can always edit it down. All right. Um, all right. So uh, the last one is going to be residential leases because we don't do much commercial, but you can do commercial. Uh, but I want to cover residential leases. So, again, you log in. This will be your main screen, the dashboard, and you're going to hover over search and you go residential quick or detailed. Doesn't matter. Um now, this would be where you would actually put the zeros in for the rent. So Deborah says, hey, what's available zero to 3,000? And Frisco. Okay, well, there's 41. Uh, now, I have condos, so I would just mark houses. Now there's 35. She goes, hey, I want a four-bedroom minimum, four plus. Oh, I want a master on the first floor. I check mark that right underneath the bedroom. Um, oh, I want a home only built 2000 and newer. There's 11. Um, I want square footage 3000 minimum. <clears throat> There's one. Okay. So again, what I would do is if she told me that I would text her and go, Hey, here's the deal. Why don't we take out the square footage? Because there's only one home and without it, there's 11. And she goes, well, I don't want anything less than 1800. Oh, okay. Well, let me try that and see if we have more than one. Oh, we have 10. So I'm going to go ahead and you see what I'm saying? You don't want to send just one property. Now, any one of these people would have called on maybe a home that wasn't even available. But you still look it up. You look at the criteria. You go do a, a search and then you send it to them. And then you go ahead and say, hey, Tabitha, by the way, I'm available still tonight at six, but 8,005 Fob Meadow is not available. Um, I just sent you an email with three properties. Did you want to look at any? Because um, I'd be you know, happy to show you anything. Uh, hey, Kay, how you doing? Um, so, uh, so that's, uh, that's, uh, the MLS. Okay. Uh, this dashboard, uh, as you start to get people that open up a portal, you'll see that their name shows up here. If they ever favored a home, it'll have a heart. You can click on it. 
and I've set your MLS up where you'll get a text message when they favor a home. Okay. Let's say that this was Tabitha and she wanted to look at these three and I had no idea where in the hell they were. If I wanted, I could check mark the box above it and hit directions. And it's going to tell me a good order to hit them in where I don't look like an idiot. Okay. So I might ask her, Hey, do you live closer to prosper or Melissa? And she's like, Oh, Melissa. And I'd say, do you want to finish in Melissa or start in Melissa? Because I'm going to do whatever she wants. Okay. I'm not going to say, well, I live in Plano. Let's end in Plano because I've got dinner plans, you know? And, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to meet her at number two, go to number three and then pass number two, going to number one. Yeah. That's going to look weird. So it kind of dumbs it down. If she said, I want to meet at Woodlawn, then you know that you could go Woodlawn limousine Hoyt or Woodlawn Hoyt limousine. Um, you see what I'm saying? You could go, you know, Hoyt, You'd always want to go Hoyt two three because see how far one and three are. So you're either you know three two one or one two three, but not two three one or not two one three. That looks weird, all right? Because they're gonna figure it out. They're like, why are we headed east? And now we're gonna head back west and pass number two again. We just looked at it. Why didn't we? And so I've had that happen. So uh, that's what's kind of cool about uh, that dashboard. Um, and again, when the dashboard, which you probably don't know. When I logged into your MLS to clean it up, this is what it looked like. I always like people to know what it really looked like because people sometimes get a little, they don't quite understand what, what it looks like when I say I've cleaned up your MLS. But this is what it looks like if I didn't do anything. And you're like, what in the hell am I looking at? Like, this is crazy. I don't need any of this shit. And it's true. You don't. So I eliminate it. But you can always add more if you want because all I did is I went and I just red X'd everything. For the uh, visitors, like how is that generated? When you send them an email, that's how how it just uh, happens. Okay, so um, let me just uh, get back to what it looked like. So that's what it looks like now. Uh, you mean the people on the left? Yeah, people on the left. Okay, remember when I said re uh, uh, results save new auto email? Yeah. When I hit save, it went to you. Uh -huh. When you open it, your name's going to show up on the left. Oh, okay. When you favorite it, I'm going to get a text, and it's going to show up with a heart. Okay. So that's why we always send it that certain way. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. And then over here is where you can always look for an open house. So you might have one link that says my office active listings. You click on it. And as you look down this list, you go, huh, what would be a good price range? You know, probably 375. So right over here, you see one on Lake Terrace, Lakeland, and you click on it. Uh, you click on it and you scroll to the bottom and you see that it's Betsy Ramirez's uh, Bethsaida. You text her and go, hey, this is um, Fred with DHS. Uh, can I do an open house at 8938 Geisman? OK, um, one of the neat things to do, which you don't have to have the uh, OK from uh, agent because these are really broker listings is and this is going to be kind of crazy. But every day, if you wanted, you could list a, You could put a new home on Facebook and say, hey, for any showings, text me directly. Here's how. You log in every day. You do this. You click on my office listings. You pick one. You check mark it. Watch the bottom. It says share. You click share, you copy and paste it, you, or you copy it. Now you go to Facebook. When you go to Facebook and when you post, you know, just a normal posting, all you're going to do is put your clicker in there and right click and paste. Um, so right here, right click, paste, chill out a second. And the home's going to load and it's going to be the MLS picture. Okay. So I'll do this just to show you. So it's going to load. Okay. Now I'm going to delete the link and I'm going to type the computer's a little slow with the, um, <clears throat> hold on a second. So now I'm going to type, uh, Whatever. Okay. I don't even know where it's at. So I'm not going to say that. Mark, I think it is. Um, 
Okay. But anyways, all I have to do is hit uh, post and it's, it's posted. So I could put for private viewing text tab of the, you know, tech Cassandra, it didn't matter. Okay. You could do one different property every day because there was 29 listings. So no matter who's the listing agent on it, we can still go on there and post Sure. It. Oh, for sure. They'll love it. And they're in my company. So Without asking them. Mm -hmm. Because they're in my company. They're really okay. mine, even though they're not. But I mean, if, if anybody ever said anything like, I would just say, oh, give me a break. We're, we're, we're showcasing your property. Yeah. It's good for you. So, yeah. um, but the neat thing about it, it would show, every, it, that would be one different property a day for 29 days. And there are always is new listings every day. And then some go in a contract. So you always can do something different and you're just showing always that you're in real estate and it's completely free. You're, you're not paying anybody to do it. It was, it was go to my office. I mean, I'm gonna do it one more time, but you see how easy that is. Yeah. Okay. Now that's just so basic. You could spruce it up. I'm not into sprucing it up. Um, but let me show you one more time how we did it. Uh, okay. That's we're, we, yeah, that's fine. So we log into MLS. And over here, you're going to have my listings and there's probably one link. And when you click on it, it'll say my office active listings. And let's just say that you said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to start today. It's the 10th. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go number one. So you just click on it and you hit share. Is this y'all's? It's a commercial one. Okay. So you hit copy, you hit close. You good? Okay. Go to, go to Facebook. Click on what you're going to post. You can post two properties, probably. I've never tried it, but let's try it. Okay, so there's the other one, and I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it did both. I'm not going to, I'm not going to post it. Um, but you can delete the link now, and you can type whatever you want. You could do a different house every day, and always put your cell phone down. And then you're posting other stuff also, but that's just easy, you know. All right, so that's that. Now, once you post it, you know how you can share it to Twitter, LinkedIn, your business page. You could copy, you know, you can do anything you want. So, um, all right, so um, so that's that's just good good knowledge to have. Uh, one of the things that I always do when you're onboarded is I always text you a weird thing like, give me your mom's maiden name, your favorite color. The reason I'm doing that is because um, I got to log in for you and then I go into your settings. So again, I'm right here and I go to summary. Okay. So I'm right here. I go, I go to my matrix. I go to summary. <coughs> then I go to settings and then I go to portal notifications. That's what it is when you send a list of properties to somebody. And I mark usually these three right here. And then I always ask you what your phone provider is. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. Okay. Well, what I do is I go in here and I click this. I put in your phone number, I pick your phone provider, and then I hit, and I hit patient. And then I'm going to get a four digit code. And when I get a four digit code right there, it says 9730. So I type in 9730 and then I hit save and I hit save. And now I just have it to where I'm going to get a text message. Um, when somebody visits a portal, saves a favorite or visits a portal for the first time, I don't do it for notes. I actually don't do it for anything other than favorites right now, but for everybody that joins, I do all three of those. So if your phone starts blowing up and you want to change it, all you have to do is go to my matrix summary settings, portal notifications and uncheck mark anything in the middle column. You might say, I don't want text messages, uncheck mark them and just go over here and check mark emails. I just think that text messages are much better because you get them like that. And when you get them, uh, it's going to say what property and who it was, and then you can text them immediately. Um, all right. So that's basically it. Those are the only ones. All right. Uh, I do want to cover how to input a listing. All right. Um, I'm going to do it super simple, but I'm going to act like I'm listing my home. So obviously you're going to go on a listing appointment. That's the goal. Always get in front of somebody. What I usually do is I'm in the house and out of it in about 30, 35 minutes. I've had agents go with me on showings, uh, on listings just in the last month. Um, so once I get the listing, I come back home and I log into MLS. And again, this will be the main screen, the dashboard, just go to input. And when you go to input, you just kind of got to look over and say, Hmm, add new listing. Yes. And then you got to decide, is it residential, multi lots, commercial or lease? Okay. 
let's say it's a sale. So it's my house. I'm the seller. You're going to click on it. And it's going to go to a screen that says, feel from existing listing, feel from realist tax or start with a blank listing. If you ever listed the home previously, you'll be able to copy it. But if you never listed it before, you can't copy somebody else's listing on that same home. Does that make sense? All right. So that means that if I've never listed this home before, I need to say feel from realist tax. And that means it's going to go to the tax roll. So I click on it. And when I click on it, I've got to go to the county. So I, I, I select Armstrong and then real quick, I type Dallas. Or real quick, I text Colin, type Colin. Okay, that's how you can get to it quicker. Okay. And then over here, I'm just going to go 8005. And I'm going to spell out Meadow. And I'm going to hit search and see if anything comes up. Okay, there it is. Let me add this person real quick. So there it is. Is everybody with me so far? How that was, you went to input. Okay, now if I hit fill, I'm done. It's going to load the listing. And I basically have all these tabs to go through before I can make it active. But what I like to do is I like to go to the last status tab. And I like to go ahead and mark it as active and hit submit. I haven't done anything. But when I hit submit, it's going to go left to right and tell me every tab I've got to get that red X to go bye bye on. Okay. So it's easier. It's easier to do that. So always go to last tab, hit active and submit, and then go left to right. Okay. So I'm not going to fill this in, but if I was going left to right, I'd go to general and property type. Well, it's a house. Uh, listing. It's always going to be an exclusive right to sell. Everything that's yellow needs to be filled in. Oh, it's a detached property. Oh, it's a uh, brick. Oh, it's pre-owned. Okay. Oh, the price is blah, blah, blah. All right. You go to the bottom, you're going to have to put in the schools and then you hit submit. When you hit submit, that red tab goes away. If it doesn't go away, it means that you missed something. And if you miss something, it tells you what you have to fill in. So there's always going to be, if the red tag is there, that rectangle or whatever it is, exclamation, it always means you haven't completely. But at the end of every tab, I hit submit. It saves it in case you, you your, your internet goes out. When you log back in, MLS will prompt you to say, hey, do you want to continue? But if you don't hit submit at each tab and your email and your internet goes out, you got to restart. Okay. okay. So that's how you do a listing. Okay. Pretty, pretty easy. Okay. Well. Oh, go ahead. What do you got? Oh, she showed me, uh, she's got something that she can't get to go away. Kind of like on a different tab, it's like gross income, net income. Is that like, I don't know, what do you put there? But she already submitted it active, didn't she? I think so. Yeah. So if she submitted it active, that means that it wasn't required. So sometimes, so the, everything white is not required. Everything in yellow is. Well, this is in yellow. That's why I asked her. I said, oh, I'll check. I'll, I'll check. Yeah. Um, so, so again, that's how you do it. One more time, just to make sure we're at my matrix. We're going to input a listing input. We're going to go to input. You go to input. You're going to hit add new. When you hit add new, you're going to pick what it is. Let's say it's a lease. Okay. I'm going to list my house for lease. I'm going to be a landlord. I hit lease. When I hit lease, I hit feel from real estate tax. And then I got to find it. This is sometimes a little bit of work because sometimes it doesn't pull the property up unless it's exact. What you don't want to do is put like West Elmore. Don't put the West, just put Elmore. Okay. Let's see if it comes up with fall. I don't know if it will. See, so you have to put a little more. So it's kind of like a give and take. Uh, we know that it comes up with meadow. Okay. And then you hit fill and then you got your screens. And then I always like to go to the status. And when I hit status, I like to go ahead and hit submit. And it'll tell me what I need to see what I mean. Super cool. And I'll walk you through it all. It's no problem. All right. So that's MLS. Okay. I think we got a pretty good uh, share of that. Quick oh, no. You're going to add um, pictures. Okay. So after it's submitted, uh, let me just show you um, a listing of mine. So. All right. So after it's submitted, every time you go to input, you'll have a drop down, a single drop down. It won't say your name because it's your system. It's because I'm the yeah. owner. It's got every agent. Uh, you're going to pick your listing. Let's just pick Tyler just for fun. All right. As soon as you pick it, it's going to give you about, I always say about 12 options separated by a little bit of space. 
that says manage photos. You click on it and it's going to just take you to a, a, a site where you're going to browse for the photos, select them, and it'll automatically put them in there. Let's say that you wanted this to be the primary shot right there. You can move it. Oh, okay. okay. So you just got to hover over it and you can move it. And once you kind of hover it there and let go, it'll yeah. switch it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you hit certify and you wait a second and now it's back to that means it accepted it. Uh, let's say you want to do open house sometime on I your, do. okay. Well, uh, you have a listing you're going to do open house on your own. I want to do open house on your listing. Oh, okay. But so on this one. Okay. Well, so the funny story with this one is it's a, it's a student that's not licensed yet. So she holds them open okay. because it's her parents' house. Oh, okay. So, um, but let's say that she wanted to do an open house on this one. And she texts me, hey, Doug, can I do an open house at 1803 Tyler? Mm -hmm. I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to advertise it because I want her to get a lot of business, but I also want it to have traffic. You're going to go to the same thing. You're going to go to input. You're going to see your listing. You're going to select it. When you select it, you'll get about, you know, 24 options, 12 and 12. You'll hit open house. And you can see that there was an open house scheduled on 9-4. So I clicked this and made it public. I click the calendar and pick the day. I do 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And then you put yes for active because it was active. It just after the open house comes and goes, it defaults it to, to, uh, to no. Okay. But you want to put yes, it's active. And then once you hit submit, now it's going to go all over the world and advertise an open house for 9-4. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, that's MLS in a nutshell. Uh, the next one I wanted to cover is zip forms. And um, this is Ranjetti. Uh, she's an agent. I did her templates 20 minutes before y'all showed up. And um, so I'm going to log her out so that we just go from the beginning. There's all kinds of ways to get to zip forms. I like to go here and it's simply texasrealestate.com. And uh, when you go there, uh, in the right corner, it'll say log in. You'll click on it. It should already default your uh, login. When you click login, it'll take you right back to that same screen. It'll say, hi, Doug. Hi, Megan. And to the right, it'll have a zip forms tab. And all you do is click on it and the screen turns blue. When the screen turns blue, I can't tell you how many times I'll say this, but only one button you ever want to hit, and it's the new button. You'll never, ever, as long as I'm alive, I pray, click on the template tab. And if you see that by logging in without touching anything, I'm in transactions. That's all I'm ever going to be in. I'm never going to hit that template tab because it can really screw up things. Um, so all I'm going to do is hit new. And let's say that uh, I have Leno as a buyer. So I'm going to log in and I'm going to hit new. And when I log in and hit new, five boxes come up. I only care about the first three. He's either a seller, a buyer, or a tenant landlord. Well, he's a buyer. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to name it. I'm going to always pick residential. I don't care if it's commercial or a lease. Just always pick residential. And then you'll go to this template and you'll pick one of four. I have five, but you'll have four. Tenant, seller, landlord, or buyer. He's a buyer. Now I just scroll down and hit save. I'll be looking at a white summary square on the next screen. And I always say, go two tabs over to documents. And this is where all your forms will be pre-filled. So I don't need to open up the IBS, but I will. And I pray it's filled out. And for some reason, there's a glitch. It won't do that one on mine regularly. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you can't. Yeah, I don't know. Because on, on lease apps, you, you, you can't do it. You, you got to print it. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so that's the IBS. Uh, I'm going to make him a client. So I, I need to send him the IBS and the buyer rep. Um, hypothetically, I've already shown him. Mm -hmm. When I met him, I gave him a home buyer packet. I didn't require him to sign anything. I just had a conversation with him. Uh, as we got up to the door and looked at the house, I talked about resale, backyard with shade, sprinkling in the garage for watering the foundation or houses move. He goes, I like you. I go, I like you. And he goes, I'd like you to be my agent. And I'm like, I'm in love with you. I'll send you something that makes that official. So I send him the IBS and the buyer rep, but I'm going to go back home to do it. So after I log in and I've already created the file, I don't need to open the IBS. I am going to open the buyer rep. When I open it, I'm going to go to the top. And I like to do all caps at this point. It just makes it easier. I see it, right? Damn it. There's too many. 
Uh, and that's all I do there, just the name. I don't fill out anything else. I already have this templated. It'll have your information. I already have Dallas, Denton, and Collin County. I'm just going to click on today's date. And then I'm going to hit the second blank and pick probably a month out um, and hit the last day. I'm going to hit save and I've done. That's all I have to do on the buyer rep because as I scroll down, the rest of it is already pre-filled. Okay, so you don't have to do anything. Uh, this paragraph is where it says that, hey, my fee is 3%. And he might call me and go, hey, what's that mean? I thought I wasn't paying anything. Like you explained that the seller pays my commission. And I might say something like this. Well, here's the deal. Look at paragraph B. It says that I'm going to first try to get that money from the seller. But if the seller doesn't pay me, I could go after you for it. But here's the deal. You Are you comfortable if I just delete that? And he goes, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to look at that. I had to do that in one of mine. Yeah. And I, I mean, in a heartbeat, I'll go, done. Let me send you a new one. And I'll just go here because it's a template. It's always going to be there. And I delete it. I save it. Now, see how save is not highlightable? All I do is kind of click in the column and it'll highlight the save. Then I hit save and now I can email it to them. So a lot of people do that and you just got to know that, hey, don't worry about it. You're most likely going to get paid by the seller anyway. So now I need to make him a client. So I'm going to send him the IBS and the buyer rep. So any document you're in, you're going to go to eSign in the left-hand corner. When you hit eSign, you're always going to have this drop down just for, um, for training, even I always hit it and select it. I like to see Digital Ink 2.0 there. I select documents to include and it gives me a list of every document. Okay. So it gives me a list of all these documents, but I only want to send right now hit the buyer rep and the IBS. So I just check mark it and then I hit close and then I hit next. And this screen is going to have a list of everybody that I need to check mark that's going to get the buyer rep. Well, the IBS, he's going to initial. But the buyer rep, he and I are going to initial, right? So I'm going to go ahead and check me, and I'm the selling agent. Selling agent represents the tenant or the buyer. And then I'm going to go to buyer one. You can see his name's there. Watch when I try to check mark him. It won't let me because I don't have his email. Now, after putting his email in, and I want to make sure it's right, so take your time on that one, you check mark it, and it'll let you. All you do is hit close, and now you're staring at two people. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always like the client to get the document first and then to come back to me already signed. So I'm going to change these up. See how it says I'm getting it first? I'm going to select two. And now it looks right. I hit next and I just hold back and all the forms are going to load on the left that I'm sending him and with a little menu on the right. Now, what I like to do is for training purposes, and really I just do it all the time, is I like to just scroll down and make sure there's an initial prompt. Well, that's the buyer rep. There's an initial prompt for him, but not for me. So right here in the top right corner, it's got two people. I hit the drop down and I pick me. And then I hit drag and drop and it gives me some initials and signatures. And I just go and drag it. And I go to the next page. If it's not on the first page, it ain't on the next page. So I'm going to drag it to each one. Is everybody with me? And you pretty much have to do that every time. Not all the time. It's a glitch in the system that sometimes it'll do it and sometimes it won't. And that's why I always check. So like here, it doesn't show the signature. So all I do is go sign. And then I drag the date. Now, when I go to the IBS, only one signature is required. Uh, one initial and it's his, but it's not there. So now I need to go back up here and change it to him. And then drag his initial. And then drag the date. And then from here, it's simple. Next, send. Just went to you. Now, I text them and say, hey, I just sent you some forms. It just shows I'm your advocate. Uh, let me know when you've signed them. It'll come back to me. All right. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to send them an offer. So I'm going to hit the back button and I'm going to get back to the forms. And so we're just going to hypothetically act like I'm writing this offer up. I already know the price. And on one side, I have the tax roll. And on the other side, I have the agent full report. Again, I've already sent them these. So now I'm going to send them an offer. So I open up the contract and I like all caps. So I go to the very top. Most of it's pre-filled. It's already got uh, Leno's name. So now the seller's name on the tax roll was Sally Seller. Okay, and Sam is the second seller. Uh, let's say he's uh, got no one. Now I'm going to look at the tax roll and it's going to say whatever, lot seven, block H, easy subdivision. Okay, see, easy addition is the same thing as subdivision. 
Uh, I go to the next tab. It's going to say City of Plano, Collin County, known as 123 Easy Street. Okay, from there, I'm going to go to uh, paragraph three. And uh, let's say we're going in at uh, 500,000. He's putting 10% down. That means 50,000 is his down payment. And that means that when I get to this second box, 450, it's a loan amount. Automatically adds it. Uh, let's say the home's vacant and there's no solar panels, so I don't need to fill in paragraph four. I go to paragraph five and on the agent full report, it says that the agent wants to use truly title. And the address of truly title is 2901 Dallas Parkway. And I have blank the earnest money. Okay, let's say it's going to be 10 grand. The next blank, I template. That's the option. The reason I put the 100 there so you'll know that that's the option and the blank before it with the dollar sign is for the earnest money. But people get confused sometimes when I look at contracts and they have it flip and I always catch it. So you just got to read it. And it's kind of weird the way they did this paragraph. So delivery earnest money within three days of the effect date, buyer must deliver to. That's always got to be a, 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 an entity, not a person. Chicago title, truly title. And then it says 10,000 as earnest money and blank as option. I already put um, down here at the bottom 10 days that you're buying. Okay. I saw an option the other day that was $1,000 for two days. So again, this 110, I always do that because I want to protect y'all, but the market's different and nobody's going to accept $100 for 10 days. So you just got to make sure that this is this this is a statement I make to every buyer because they'll always ask you what happens to these two checks, and um, and I always say, well, you're not going to be checks; they'll be wires. You'll wire them to the title company together, and that thousand dollars right there, Hammer, you got to write it like you're going to lose it because there's only one way you'll ever see it again, and that's if we go to closing. Well, what if a tornado rips the house apart? You'll lose the thousand. If it doesn't go to closing, you won't get the option back ever. And so that's important because that's a lot of money for two days. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you want a house, that's the way it's going to probably go down. Not always. Um, but, but again, I'm going to always have templated a hundred on your contracts in 10 days. You don't have to do anything here. Those two blanks leave alone. From there, you go down to the next paragraph. I've templated that the seller's going to pay the title. Title policy is about 1% of the sales price. Okay. In this market, in the last eight months, I haven't seen one seller pay for the title because there's no homes on the market. But if we start to balance out a little, you'll see that as a default, you'll be asking the seller to pay the title. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can negotiate. All that's negotiable. From there, really, you don't have to fill out anything. I've already got everything done and you'll go all the way to paragraph nine. And paragraph nine will be the closing date. And you click on the blank and you'll obviously want to make sure that the seller's okay with the closing date, your buyer's okay with the closing date, and the lender can do it. And it's usually going to be, you know, 30 days out. All right. Uh, from there, paragraph nine, you go to paragraph 21. And I've already put your emails in there. Okay. So uh, I got your email in there. I've got your email in there. And then I've always mar already marked first and third paragraph. Those are the most common addendums. OK, let's talk about the addendums. A lot of people are using this one. You'll have to mark it. That's the lender waiver on the appraisal. You know, that's on a conventional loan when a buyer, when a seller says, I, I want I want the sales price no matter what. And so now you have to waive the appraisal, not waive it. But like no matter what the appraisal comes in, you're still going to pay the sales price. And, and that's that form. Have you ever used it? OK, well, that's fine. Yeah, I've used it. Yeah. So my point is, if, if you ever, you know, I want you all to send me the offers before you send them out. Uh, I'm going to ask you, hey, appraisal waiver, no. And if you say no, then I don't even cover it. But if you do have it, you need to mark it here in paragraph 22, that it's a required addendum. Mm -hmm. Let's say the seller's going to lease the house back right there. Let's say it was before 78 right there. Let's say you're asking for the washer, fridge, and dryer. What would that go on? Other. The non-realty addendum. Yeah. And it's not pre-filled exactly. So you would type other, you'd click other and just say non-realty. Cool. If it's not there, then you type other. I mean, you, you click other and you type in whatever the form's title is. All right. Uh, from there, you go to the last page, basically for us. On the left, I've already templated your side. Okay. It'll have your information. On the right, what I want you to do is from here to here and don't go any further. This will all be filled in identical to these 
sections, but, but with the listing agents information, meaning you won't go any further than city, state, and zip, but there'll be no blanks over here if there's not blanks over here. So in the MLS, it'll have the broker name, it'll have the broker license number, it'll have the listing agent, it'll have the listing agent's license number, it'll have the listing agent's email, it'll have the listing agent's phone number, it'll have a supervisor, it'll have a supervisor license number, it'll be their physical address of the uh, broker, it'll be the physical phone number of the broker, and then it'll be city, state, zip, and then you're done. Then you hit save, and now you're ready to send it to them. So I like to do it twice just for training purposes. So again, what are we going to hit? E-sign. Once we hit e-sign, we're going to hit the drop down just to get accustomed to it. Always pick Digital Ink 2.0. We're going to select the documents to include. And let's say that we're going to send over a HOA, third party, and we're asking for the washer fridge and the seller's going to lease the house back. You hit close. You want to verify you see those forms. You hit next. When you hit next, you're going to not check mark you on this one, only the buyer. So I'm going to check mark Leno. I'm going to hit close. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to get all the forms to load on the left. And that little menu on the right. <clears throat> I always like to scroll down and make sure there's an initial prompt. There's going to be. Okay, so I'm good. I know it's going to be there. So I just hit next and send. And I text you and say, look for it. So that sends all five uh, documents? Uh-huh. And it'll tell you exactly where to initial. So here's what happens. Because you're the only one that got it, but it's my account, I'm going to get it back by default. I get it back in three emails. The first two just say, you got it. Mm -hmm. You signed it. The third one says it's complete. Click here. And here is highlightable. You click on here yes. and it'll say download. That's what you download, save it, and then you do a new email to Megan, the listing agent, and you forward it to her. And you go, hey, I just want to let you, and you text her, call it, hey, I just want to let you know I just sent you an offer over. And then you're going to forward the pre-approval, or if it's cash, a proof of funds. Okay? And that's the whole ballgame. And then if she replies back, go, hey, when do you think you might get an answer? What you got? Um, you did it in the order, and I'm just but yeah. So the, the, the weird thing is that when you send it to the buyer, it comes back in three emails. Mm -hmm. The first two are from AuthentiSign, but the third one is from you to you. To you. <laughs> That's really, but it'll say, click here, and here will be highlightable. Yeah. You click on it, and then you can save it as a PDF. So, so right here, you can see, I've got, it says it failed because the emails are all bogus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what was it? The listing agent, like, if they don't respond to you, like, do you just keep contacting them until they respond? I mean, they should, yeah. right? I mean, they're wanting. Mm, you'd the be offer. surprised. No, yeah. Some yeah. don't answer until the next day or something. Yeah, you, you never know. Okay, so now that's pretty much zip forms, okay? So when, um, when, you, uh, when you get your buyer to sign and you want to send it to offer, do you send it through zip forms like the sign? I don't because when I send it to the buyer in zip forms and she signs, it's going to come back to me, you know, in the third email. Right, email. Yeah, you can do it. I just don't. Okay, so you can upload it to zip forms. Yes, that way. yes. Don't, don't ask me how because I don't do it. Okay. But if you want to, like, otherwise you can absolutely. Like you yes, a lot of people do. Right. You can actually upload it and send it through to where somebody can initial a change, you know, because it's through zip forms. Right. You can all, like a counter, you could load it through zip forms and send it back to your buyer to have them initial it. Okay. Okay. Or an offer? Yeah. Well, the offer is going to be through zip forms. So if we send an offer to a buyer, to the buyer. Um, they sign it. Okay, let me change it. So my buyer signed the offer. The <laughs> listing agent has the offer. They counter. Yeah, just with not on the price, just on um, auction like days. Close day okay, and stuff like that. All right. Um, but everything else is verbally. Good. Verbally, and then they're waiting to send it back over. Okay, so now they've initialed a change, and all you need is your buyer to initial one change. Mm -hmm. What he said, you can load it through zip forms. And you can send it to your client to get them just to initial that. Okay. Right. You don't have to redo the whole contract. Now I use DocuSign, but I pay for it. And the reason I use DocuSign is because I love it, but you can do it through zip forms and there's all kinds of tutorials. So you can go to YouTube and find a tutorial. It's on, real easy. I was messing with it. And then it I'm just sure. says, it actually, you go it back. says add external. Yeah, it right? says add, uh, add document. If you oh, go okay, to photo, yeah. um, Sure. Go to documents. On That's there. right. It does say that when you're trying to send them 
it'll ask you if you want um, to. Oh, like I'm going to send something? Yeah. Well, it says add document. Okay. It says add doc right there. And then just go into uh, oh, and then browse just document. Find it. Yeah, find it. And, and then the that's PDF. Yeah. yeah perfect. Actually, I had to do that to change the price. That makes sense? Um, so, yeah, yeah okay. I had to do that. Okay. And that's why you don't have to pay for DocuSign because it's kind of embedded and in actually, here. Actually, I, I love this better because uh, DocuSign is just so, I don't know, I, I tried messing with DocuSign yeah. before. Well, well, and I might stop it, yeah. And, so, just, and there's also an app called Mobile Zip Forms or Zip Forms, mm -hmm. Zip Forms Mobile. It's $9 a year. Um, yeah, Zip Form Mobile. So it's right there. Right. And when it opens, when it opens, it has all your stuff saved. And it's the mobile app that you can do everything through. So you could probably, you know, you can do the same. Oh, I didn't know about the Yeah, I use so this I all the time. So, so like right it, here, look at that. It says Lena. That's how yeah. we just did. So it's right there. If I do that, it opens right up. So yeah, so it's perfect. Um, all right. So let's do let's do one more on zip forms just to make sure we're all there. So first off is we're going to go to texasrealestate.com. Is everybody good on time? And, mm -hmm. Okay, food, eat it, whatever. All right. Okay. Um, you're going to see your name. Hi, K. You're going to click zip forms. And uh, the turn screen is going to turn uh, blue. Um, you're going to hit one tab and one tab only. Yeah. New. Uh, once you hit the new button, uh, you're going to get five boxes. Only concerned about the first three. Uh, let's say that it's a uh, seller. Okay. The difference with a seller is that I don't DocuSign anything. I print it because I want to close it while I'm there. Is that what you do? Like you do with that lease? You print it, right? I did. Um, I did yeah, I did the initial thing. I just yeah. handed it. Right. But I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the type that ever would, I mean, I'm going to e-sign to a buyer all day long, but when I go to your house, I'm, I'm leaving with the listing, I hope. And I don't want to say, Oh, uh, internet's down. Oh, I don't have cell service. So I'm not going to send it to you while I'm at the house and have you sign it because there's something could go down. I know I've printed it. I know I've got it. And there's nothing that's going to come up that if you can't sign, I can't get it to you because I printed it. Does that make sense? Um, so that's why this is a little different when you do a listing, it's like that because all I'm doing is clicking on this tab and again, I'm going to name it, but doesn't get confused with the other one. Uh, I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to pick listing. That's a seller. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to have a white summary square and go two tabs over to documents. When I click on it, there's not as many forms. Because all I need is the IBS, the listing, and the seller's disclosure. So again, here's the IBS. It's done. I'm praying it's filled out because I have a glitch in mind. I don't know why yeah. it does that. So I, I would do that. Y'all should be filled out. Uh, residential listing to sell. Okay. Again, I'm going to put uh, his name. I usually use all caps. Uh, I don't. That's all I do because down here is the legal description. You know, blah 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 blah. You know, whatever. Okay. That's all going to be filled in. And then when I go to page two, I'm going to know whether there's an HOA or not. I already have it templated. There is. So let's say there's not. I got to physically mark it that there's not and unmark that. I'm going to leave the uh, date blank or the price blank because we might negotiate that. Uh, I am going to say, when am I meeting you? Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pick that. And then I'm going to go like three months out and pick the same day. I have 6% already defaulted. I have that you're going to pay my transaction fee, but you're my best friend. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But I know that um, I always have it there. And that's your call. I don't do that in y'all's template, but I do put the 6% there. You scroll down and the rest of this document is completely filled out. Now, one thing that I do, but I don't put in your template is this paragraph. And this is what I type in. So I don't speak for you because you're an independent contractor, but this is what I do. And that is that Remember, I had the 6%. Okay. So now when I'm at the listing, I go, Hey, let me just show you this. Uh, either party can terminate with one day notice in case you don't like me. Um, if I help you on your next house, I'll reduce my commission from six to five it means I'll get two and the other agent will get three. And if I do an open house and the buyer comes in on my own and I get them, I'll do it for four. It looks like I'm getting my reduction but I'm making 2% more than I would if there was two agents because the two agents, if he buys his next home, I'm only getting two. But if I sell it myself, I'm getting four, but he doesn't know that. And he's like, man, that's really good business plan. I'm like, I know. So, and then I might, <laughs> but again, you're my friend. So I might just go in and, and delete it all. See what I'm saying? You can always play with it. Right. Um, and then you're done at the very end. It's already pre-filled. All right. I hit save and I'm going to print it. I hit the back button. I'm going to print the IBS. I hit the back button. I'm going to open up the seller's disclosure. It's going to be blank. 
and I'm going to print it. And that's it. That's all I take on the listing. I take the IBS, the listing, and the seller's disclosure. I have my little home buyer packet that has my resume and BS propaganda. Um, and uh, and when you go on a listing, you should always be uh, kind of taking little breaks and go, what do you think? You good? And, it, you know, if, if he's like, yeah. I mean, at the end, I go, any questions? He's like, no. And I was like, what do you think? He's like, if, he, if I saw that, I would say, <laughs> if I saw this, I would say, I tell you what, find me a spare key. I'll go grab my sign. And I just shut up and get up and leave and make him stop me. Most people won't stop you. Now, if they're going through a divorce or something, obviously it's not going to happen. So yeah. don't be stupid and go, no, I want you to sign today. You know, that's yeah. that's the 90s sales. That's not what we do anymore. Um, all right. So other than that, the last thing I'm going to cover is uh, a back agent. So that we, well, you got a question? Before? Yeah. Like, okay. So you don't have the, what's it called? The information on your uh, MLS yet. So you can put your sign in the front yard. Well, you, you, yeah, absolutely, because okay. you have the listing. Okay, so as long as you have the listing yeah. signed already, right? You can just have right, and then you're going to head back and you're going to input it that day. Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, cool. you actually don't have to put it in that day. You have yeah. a day, a couple day window. Um, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, what you don't want to do is put a sign in the yard and you don't have the listing. Yeah. Uh, but oh yeah, I know for sure. All right, so this is back agent, and this is one of the four emails you get when you are onboarded. Uh, everybody should have already kind of been in here. I actually have this website saved on my phone. I don't use the app. I use this website. So on my phone, I have Matrix website, and I have back agent website, not the apps. Um, you're going to log in, and your screen will look identical to mine, except your picture will be in the right corner. So let's just kind of go through this a little. Number one, people always text. 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 I'll get you just a second. Um uh, go ahead and type your questions in on the right, and um, and uh, I'll get y'all right before I'll get y'all right before we end. Um, okay, so this is a uh, back agent. Everybody gets it. And again, this is the uh, the site dhsrealty.backagent.net. I have it on my phone. Uh, it'll look like this. So let's just kind of cover some of these. This is a start menu, and I don't really add anything here. It's just updates on you know, real uh, NAR news and stuff like that. This little calendar. I really don't pay a lot of attention to this calendar. Um, we, we have talked about making it exact for every month, but we're all fluid. And I don't ever want to be that type of company that has a 30 day. Huh? Yeah, that has a 30 day window of like, hey, every day we're doing this. I mean, I'm available five even to midnight. We, we can train all day long, whatever you want. So we, we're fluid. You know, we're doing these little work sessions for a while. Uh, we'll go back to doing like a buyer you know, you know, but, but our money, our wheelhouse is going to be working with four people, a buyer, seller, tenant, landlord. That's it. The rest is meet people, get involved in the community, put signs off of 380 or wherever. I mean, they got to call off a sign that they, you know, just had an imagination. They saw this rustic sign, right? And yeah, the corner of the property had this old sign that yeah. had like trees thrown up in it from the 70s. So yeah. Them all down and, and they got a sign call off and got a listing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And it didn't cost anything to have a sign like that off a highway or a billboard or something friggin' make you broke, you know? So, um, so yeah, it's all that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, so sometimes people text me and say, Hey, how do I get in touch with, uh, uh, Leno? I'm going to text you real quick his number. Cause that's just how I do things. But what I'd love to say is go to back agent, but I hate that. I hate people saying that to yeah. me. Um, and so I'll do it because it's not that big of a deal and I do things. For, but if you ever wanted to find anybody in this room other than you, cause you're not in the company, uh, <laughs> yet is, uh, because I put every, uh, I put everybody in here, part of your onboarding, you just hit people. And when you hit people, it's, it's dummy proof L E N that's it. Okay. Now it says right there, first name, if you wanted to do last name. B-A-R, I think we have a few. So that's going to be last names people's, okay? Um, so it's kind of dummy proof. You can change it. You can say show all. I just want to see how many people. And you can just kind of scroll down alphabetically. It's going to have everybody, okay? Um, look at that. See, it's got everybody. M-E-G. Okay. All right. I <laughs> know. I'm just saying we got everybody. Um, but that's how easy it is. All right. Uh, that's how easy it is. All right. 
except Kay's name. I don't know if I have Kay like this. Let's see. Oh, look at that. All right. So anyway, that's how you do it. Okay. Um, now, some, so we're back at the start menu. That's where we find people. Okay. Now we go to office. And when you click on office, click on documents. And we have a, a letterhead that you can always use. But right here, it says quick resources 40. And if you click on it, what I've done is I have uh, downloaded every logo that I've had a professional make for the company that you can use. Um, as you scroll down, you're going to see that um, I've got a marketing link. I've got the open house registry. That's what we used the other day at the open house. I've got a referral form. That's for you to get a referral anywhere in the United States or a, the world. And then if you scroll down a little further, I've got the W9. That's very important because when you do a lease, the apartment or the landlord agent is going to want our W9. So all you do is you go over here and click send share. And when you do that, you say send by email and it just walks you through, you know, Doug and then his email and then W9 2021 and then send and they got it. I keep a couple things on my phone that I always want to have and I think it'd probably be good for y'all, but I'm not going to, but I have the W9 for our company. I have a lease app blank. Um, and uh, then I have some things to onboard y'all. So, you know, those are things that you sometimes are asked pretty regularly. All right, real quick, I'm going to load a transaction to kind of show you how it's done. I posted this morning loading a sale and a lease. Okay. Um, so we're going to act like we have a contract and uh, Tabitha is the buyer and you're working with the buyer. And now you need to get paid. And the title company is asking for something called a CDA. That stands for Commission Disbursement Authorization. That's how you get paid. So in order to get paid on a sale or lease, you've got to go through and do this in back agent. So you're going to log in and just hit transact. Oh, let me, I got to log in on here because on Chrome, it doesn't give you um, one tab that we need. Give me a second. You said if you look at it under phone, I'll show you. All right. Whenever you log in on two devices, it'll have ask this. Just put yes. That means you're on two devices, but it's no problem. Uh, you get to the same screen. Okay. And now we want to load a transaction. So you'll hit transactions. Okay, on, on Microsoft Edge, you don't get this add a transaction tab. So you always want to be on Chrome. So all you do is after you hit transactions, you hit add a transaction. And once you hit add a transaction, it's going to ask you, is it residential, an apartment, commercial, or a referral? Well, she's a buyer, so it's residential. And then it'll say, are you working a sale or a lease? A sale. And then I always want people to go to pre-closing or pre-move-in. It's always the fourth rectangle down. Click it, and then it's going to ask you who you're working with, and you're a buyer. And then it just says, select a client. And so I'm going to put in Tabitha, and I'm just going to put buyer here, buyer, and then Tabitha's email. And then when you hit add a contact, it'll show her. There she is, and then you just hit create a new transaction. At this point, you're going to see some orange boxes. And the, the see how that's marked pre-closing? That's because I, I, I hit it, remember, in the very beginning? You always want to hit that box right there whenever you log in or pre-move in. Because what it does effectively is it oranges boxes that all you need to do is go left to right and make them gray. So you'll click on property. And when you click on property, it'll say set the property. And it'll ask you, do you want to pull it from the MLS or basic info? So you can pull it from the MLS. We're just going to make up a house. So one, two, three, easy. Okay. Um, I think you have to put in the city if, you, if you're going to do it manually. I can't get the right state, so that's good. And then what's what was the final sales price? Okay, half a million. Right. So uh, then you hit set property. Watch that orange box. Bye bye. Now you go to the next one. 
And on contact, I'm going to do this real quick. I just want to show you because this is the way you'll do it and it'll be recorded. You got to add a title poly, a title company. So if you type in, you know, somebody's name, it might pull them up like they're already in the directory and you can just click it and it'll pre-fill it. And then you hit select contact. Now there's only two, two things left. And this is where I do things a little different. You know that Tabitha is my client. I don't care who the seller is. So you can put Sally Seller for all I care because you're going to load the contract in a second and it's going to have the real seller's name. I'm never going to be in touch with the seller. That's not my client. My client is the buyer and I have the forms. It's just that I have to orange that box out or gray it out. And this is the quickest way to do it. Does that make sense or not? You don't have to be exact. So when, when do we do this part? Like after? When we're well, I mean, buying? I don't know. I'm sure that some people in here, when they get an IBS and a buyer rep, they just go in and create a transaction. Okay. Right. Because you don't have to put the property in, but you it can be a way for you to keep the files without being all jumbled, saved on your computer. So this is for us to kind of like manage. Well, in a second, we're going to see that you're going to, um, we're going to submit a, uh, you're going to see your commission. Right. And then I get it and I have to approve it. I look at all your forms to make sure they're signed right. right. Then I approve it and I send it to the title company. And that's how you get paid. Okay, gotcha. um, so again, this is the listing agent. So, you know, you, you're going to put something in here. Okay. Now watch the orange box. See, it went away. All right. Now these are dates and uh, info questions. They don't have to be exact either because this is just a program that wants you to make some, answer some questions. So I'm going to go through this real quick. Uh, it take me like just a couple of minutes. We'll be done. But I do want to show this. So yeah, when it was it executed, let's say it was executed yesterday. You know, when's the closing date? It's the end of the month. How many option period? 10 days. How long does the buyer have for financing? Usually it's 21. I don't care about any of these questions really because we have the form. We're about to load the contract. Uh, nobody's going to look at this just to get through this box and it's required to get to a, a CDA. It is important to probably put the closing date. So we'll put, um, you know, it's going to be right around Halloween. That's crazy. It's next month. Um, this is, uh, is the agent in your office? No, that would be an intermediary. Uh, what type of property is it? It's a one to four. Uh, what type of ownership? It's a conventional resale. Was it built before 78? That's for lead. Is there an HOA? If it is, it'll tell you to load an HOA addendum. Is it in a mud? Is it in a flood hazard? And then it'll say, what's the sales price? That's the only thing that needs to be exact. So 500. What type of financing? Is everybody with me? I know it's kind of boring. All right. And then. Is there a change to the PID or the mud or something like this month? Yeah. They did just to have it as a disclosure. But but we have we have it in our contracts. Uh, and then when's the closing date? You want to go ahead and put that. It was October 29th. Okay. Watch that orange box. So now we only have one box left. Okay. So. The goal is to have that submit button turn yellow and it will after we get six things done here. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to scroll down and I'm not going to load everything because um, I want to get us here quicker, but you will have an IBS. Okay. You'll load it. All right. But for me, I'm just trying to get us through here quicker, but you'll load the IBS. It's super simple. It just walks you through where to find it on your computer. Um, you'll also have a buyer rep because uh, Tabitha has to be a client. Okay, so I'm not going to hit request exemption for that. I'm just doing it today for training. Okay, you can see that this five was six and now it's going to be four. And then you go down and you're going to load a contract. There are going to be some forms that, you know, that it's going to tell you that you have to load. And the best way to do it is to just have it on your laptop, save it as a PDF. Now there's going to be three documents. Okay, I'm going to have to attach something, so I'm going to show you how to attach a contract. So I just hit attach, and then you hit upload now. You got to go? Hi, right, brother. What's that, money? Yeah. Nice. All right, I'll get it to you. <laughs> Strong work. <laughs> I will get it to you. What? To you. Okay, sounds good. I'll text you as soon as I get home. Uh, okay, so then you got to upload it, and when you upload it, it's going to ask you to find it on your computer. So all you do.
Are you low? So, do it one more time. Send it back. Okay, so uh, let's see. Sean Reich, you know, and I do him. All right, Araceli. All right, so I'm going to review it real quick and show you what it looks like. Is everybody with me? Hold on, yeah. bear with me. All right, so here's what it's going to look like. Here's some, one more thing back. Okay, so when everything's grayed out, you'll see that yellow tab, okay? Is everybody with me? Yeah. All right, so all these were orange, and then you grade them out, that tab will go yellow. You'll hit submit, and you'll hit continue, okay? Let me, let me go back one more. I'm going to modify it so that you can see what it means. Okay, so you'll hit submit, and you won't have two options, okay, because it's already been submitted. You only have one. It'll say continue to next step. When you continue to next step, this is what you're going to see, and this is a CVA, okay? Now, it's going to already have all that title crap up there. That's based on the boxes you filled in, okay? Now, this is Araceli. She's in her office. Um. Her total commission is seventy six fifty. Uh, she's getting reimbursed five fifty. Uh, she's getting a transaction fee of two twenty five paid by the buyer. So then down here you can see that her commission was seventy seven oh one. That's my transaction fee, but the buyer's paying it, so it's like a wash. And then she's giving the buyer four ninety nine. So it shows all the commission down there. See that? There's the there's the total eighty four twenty five. It automatically separates it. She didn't have to do that. It shows eighty four twenty five, and then all she's going to do is say create funding request. What's that E and O? E and O is for errors and omission. That's uh, twenty five bucks. Uh -huh. That's the two twenty five. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that never goes away because okay. that protects you in case you get sued if you did something legal. Okay. Cool. All right, and then you just hit continue to next step. You're always going to have five questions. You go, yes, yes. You don't even read them because <laughs> you don't have to. And then you hit submit and boom, she just submitted it. And then what happens is I'll look at it by reviewing it. This is just on the back end, what I do to every transaction. So I review all the forms and I approve it. And when I approve it, it'll have this screen. It'll say create confirmation. I'll go in and make sure that the money's all right. Okay, so I'll see it again. And then right here, I have the right to authorize it. And when I authorize it, I hit create. And then I always send you a copy of the CDA also. So you'll see on the next screen, it'll say send. And I'll go boom. And it'll give me all the emails that you, in, you inputted. And I'll go, oh, okay, I'm going to send one to her and one to her. And then I'll send one to me also. So I'll send it. Anytime you're giving money back to a buyer, there's going to be a pre-filled form that's sent to the title company authorizing you to give money back. And that's the second send. See, it says contribution letter to buyer and it's generated automatically. So I'm going to send that also. And I always select the title, you and me, so that we all have a copy. And then I send it. And once I send it, I then just scroll down one more time and hit set to confirm and we're done. Why exactly is she giving money back? Um, well, a lot of times uh, people do that. So let, um, I'll give you an example. I'm working with an Indian family that my wife teaches their kiddo uh, speech. And um, I already worked with two Indian families and they're very close. And the first Indian family I gave 1% back to and everyone that calls me, they know that they're getting that. So on my CDA, like this house that's about to close is 550. I'm giving them $5,500 and I'll make 11,000. 5,500 times two. Um, so on my CDA, it says 5,500 going to Onnush. Okay. So I'll have two emails that are sent to the title company. One is the CDA. And then one is a letter saying, Hey, I'm authorizing to give this amount. Now I had to give it uh, to the lender and make sure the lender was okay with it. So it's not like I'm meeting them at seven 11 and give them $5,500 after closing. No, because that, that's what you used to do. Yeah. Uh, now everything has to be disclosed after. Well, it's kind of like a referral. Yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. So, um, so other than that, uh, I mean, that's been an hour and 20 minutes of training. Do y'all have anything specific you want me to cover? I just have a question about the officer. Do 
Okay. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So I haven't done any of that yet, so I'm just now getting like everything situated. Okay. Um. So, like, when you do the obsidian, I know you like sign up for it, submit it, and then your phone starts going off. But like, do you actually go meet the people? Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, who's who's done Op City other than Megan and Eddie? Okay, Cassandra. So yeah, so the way Op City works is um, the the phone goes off as a text, and you go like that as quick as you can, yeah. and it'll say you either got it or you didn't. If you got it, and about five seconds later or so, the phone rings. Sometimes even when you don't get it, the phone rings. So always know that I had that happen, and Eddie said, "Oh, it showed I didn't get it," but then I got a call, and it was a four hundred ninety thousand dollar buyer. So. Um, uh, what I like to do is, and again, everybody be different. We'll let them talk, but I just go, Hey, this is Doug with DHS Realty. Hey, this is Fred with Op City. We have uh, uh, Leno on the other line. He's looking at 123 Easy Street. I'm going to get off the phone. He's been pre approved. He's not working with a buyer. And that's usually a bunch of BS because yeah. they, don't, they don't vet people correctly. So I still want to vet him my way. And I'll go, Absolutely. And so they'll go, Okay, it's you and uh, Leno. And I'll go, Hey, how you doing? Because there's always like a dead, yeah. dead space. Yeah. And you got to initiate and go, hey, how you doing? I'm Doug. Hey, yeah, I was looking at one, two, three, easy street. Yeah, when you want to look at it? Oh, I don't know. I didn't know I could look at it real quick. Oh, yeah, what, this afternoon? Five, six? Yeah, how about six? Oh, okay, cool. Is this your cell phone? And then I'm going to start having a relationship. You know, uh, get his cell phone, see if he texts, get his email, ask him if he's pre-approved. If not, I'm going to put him on speaker, send him a lender, um, see if he's in a five-year lease or a five-day lease or month to month. And, and then I'll say, all right, cool. I'll see you at six. I get off the phone and I immediately send him my business card, Haystack. And I go in the MLS. I do a search, send it to him of that property. And then all other properties, two different emails. And then I leave him a video message. Hey, Leno, this is Doug. I just want to let you know that I'll see you tonight at six. And also, I don't know why I'm looking at you. I'll yeah. be looking at the phone. But, <laughs> uh, and, and I would just say, uh, if you check your email, um, I've got two emails. One is the property we're meeting at. And the other one is three properties around that. I went ahead and made appointments for them. So we can knock out four homes tonight. And worst case, if you don't want to, I'll just cancel them. But look forward to seeing you. You know, boom, you're done. How do y'all do it? And y'all tell it. Yeah, pretty much. The same. Okay. And Go ahead, like Megan. Put them up on that um, website. Four more. Sure. Do that before you meet them. You can because it's free. Yeah. Is, is it? Yeah. You don't have it? No. <laughs> you can look yourself up, family members, all kinds of stuff, and it'll show yeah. you. Want the four one? Yeah. All of it. I do too. Who do we go to? I see people out on the fly. Christian, on the EMO on the insurance, we're going to have that fee on every transaction. Uh, on, so on the on every transaction, uh, that's a sale. You have twenty five dollars. Uh, on your first twenty homes in a year, you pay the two hundred. So it's just twenty five for the EMO. Uh huh. Okay, but do should we be having some of insurance on our own? To I mean, you can have uh, an umbrella policy, you know, usually like a million dollar umbrella policy is like eight bucks a month, okay. um, and that covers almost everything you ever touch. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, you just talk to an insurance person. Okay. I mean, forever when I was started, I didn't have anything, you know, okay. but I mean, you, you know, that again, I'm not speaking as right. an authority on it or right. anything, but um, yeah, in your first 20 transactions, you pay 225. Anything over twenty in a year, you only pay the E and O, which is twenty five. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a cap, but not for me, you know. And we have probably thirty agents that'll have over twenty homes this year, so they're all just paying twenty five bucks. Right. But yeah, that never goes away. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I just didn't know. Oh yeah, I for needed, sure. I didn't know if I needed to have something separate as well. If that. But. Yeah. You don't. I mean, it's your call. Okay. I mean, I don't want to answer. Yeah. Hey, Doug, for um. I guess in my case, like where I'm buying a house and I'm the agent, could you go over how I'm going to do the commission? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you're under contract. Yeah. And you've already done your inspection. You're golden. Yeah. And you've already talked to a lender. Yeah, in the process. Yeah. Your ballpark closing costs. Like 12, uh, 12 grand. And what's the price of the house? Four thirty. So four times three is twelve. Right. And that's a twelve thousand dollar commission. Right. So probably even today. I would call one more time the lender and ask them exactly what is my closing cost, not down payment, which is what are my closing costs. Right. And are you in a pretty good relationship with that other agent? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I would just text the other agent. If it was Eddie, I'd say, Hey Eddie, this is hammer. Um, everything's golden. I just got the phone. My lender, it looks like my total closing costs are 12,000 and I know I'm getting that in commission. So I'm going to send over an amendment and I'm going to change paragraph four and put 12,000 in there. 
And then in paragraph nine of the, of the amendment, I'm going to type in seller to reduce my commission to $300. If okay. your commission was 12,300, because what you're doing is you're getting the 12, but you're getting it through payment of closing costs where right. it's not coming out of your checking account. Right. Yeah. You've got to explain to people why it's better to do it that way versus asking to take it off the price of the house. Because if you take that 12,000 off of what you finance, it's a drop in the bucket. They yeah, it's like $2.30 every thousand. Payment, so it's better to do that on the tax you got to bring to the table up front. You got to make sure people understand that. Yeah, for sure. Right, it's so confusing. It's it's only that, that amendment, right? As long as they agree to it. Yes. Because he's his own agent mm -hmm. buying the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you would do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then any questions, let me know. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, when you sell your house, you whenever you sell your house, you don't want to charge, you know, you don't want to take any commission. Just pay the 225 because if it's your home for two years as a homestead, you won't be taxed on anything under, you know, a 250 single and half a mar million married. So why take a commission? You'd be taxed on take it out of your net proceeds. You don't get taxed on it because you don't owe me anything other than the 225. Um, what else? So that was that's good. That was a good hammer. Okay. What did you have? Questions? Megan, look at Megan. She's chomping. Oh, yeah. no. I just I want to say when I take those office calls, I always make sure. And paper oh, look at that. Questions that I make sure so you're not contacting them back and forth, you know, and then it would take 30 minutes after you get off the phone call to kind of wrap up email. Yeah. Well, they were saying something about the leases. They're like, when we were at our lunch a minute ago, about a dollar and then $800. And I'm like, I'm so confused. I don't know. Because I ignored. Okay. okay. So. Dave heard my phone go off and it was off city and he was like, You need to get that and I was like, No, it's for eight hundred dollars. Like, have you looked at yeah. there's nothing. Okay, I don't even I'll know what that up. means. So well, because that's their budget to spend monthly is eight hundred dollars okay. in a lease. So where okay. am I gonna find a house You're not. in Dallas for eight hundred dollars? No, and then Dallas. the work that you put into it. Yeah. Yeah. They get mad at you. Yeah, like we got a five thousand dollars. Yeah, I had a lady saying, but I thought y'all had everything. I was like, I'm not sure who y'all is. I don't have a name. That makes sense. Okay, I was just really. And then I asked if they, because I saw some where the commission was a.